Hello everyone and welcome back. It's day number seven of the Summit 2 by G2A.com America. And we're into game number two of four today. We have four best of ones for you. We just saw Team Complexity take out the Sneaky Knicks Assassins. And for our next matchup, we're going to have Union Gaming taking on Stay Free. Both of these teams yet to get a win here in the Summit 2. So one of these teams will finally be able to get a notch into their win column. And uh, joining me by the side for this adventure is going to be, of course, none other than the Fabulously dressed, very well stiff, Mr. Kevin. F4L, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. You're looking good. Always looking good. My God. Let's go ahead, and I guess without further ado, we'll just throw ourselves into the draft at hand. And, well, taking advantage of that first pick opportunity uh, is going to be Union Gaming, and they grab up the Faceless Void, I'd imagine, and Stay Free, who opted for Radiant Side with their coin flip, have gotten a hold of the Wisp, and the Bat Rider, and of course Union Gaming followed that up with the Skywrath Mage. And we saw last game Skywrath Mage Faceless Void. Great combo that even took down some of the beefiest heroes, including the Brax Magnus and Mike's Tidehunter. Just such great kind work, of, you know. Kind of surprising to me that they would pick Void and then Skywrath instead of Skywrath and then Void. Yeah. You don't really want to pick Void and then not have <clears throat> Skywrath if you can. Yeah, I mean, there is op other options you can fall back on, but Skyrath is, like, the, the tried and true. Yeah, I understand, like, it's like it's uh, fries and ketchup, not fries and mayo. a lot of people, yep. Yeah, I certainly agree Radiant with that. Team and they're ban. favoring to get rid of the uh, pesky lane-dominant Razor. Uh, they also ban out Terror Blade, which is kind of hot and cold as of recent with his changes. Maybe Cloud9, one of the few teams yeah. that still hold him as a top priority yeah, but, grab. I, I noticed recently no one's even been banning ban. it against Cloud9. Yeah, I, I think it's just slow. I think just the hero is just not good. It's the last probably round a nerfs hit him so hard. Yeah, well, I imagine it's a mix of the nerfs that hit him and the fact that teams are starting to understand what the hell he's really all about and being able to take Ten care seconds, of him and take him out, remaining. even if he's brought up. But more or less, teams are just like, yeah, there's other Five options out there that can remaining. clearly outfarm him at this point. And he's just taken yeah, down a little Naga too far. It's actually just a better tier blade. Yeah. The only advantage that Terrorblade had over Naga previously was that you could spawn illusions at like a frequent rate instead of like having all your illusions all at once. I understand. We saw but, well yesterday Naga. And they used to be so tanky and do so Radiant much damage. But... It was my last game yesterday where you left me and I was uh, by my lonesome that I saw the epic Naga Actually, versus Morphling engagement. I tuned in. To Thank the you. Latest starts of that it game. was it long. Was pretty... it, of all the games that went swift and quick, like that was the one game that just went just a little too long Ten right there at the end. Right? But it was it was a good payoff, and it was the Naga who ultimately came out on top, which most were not Radiant too surprised, team. but a valiant effort regardless from uh, the Morphling player. Anyways, yep. for this draft at hand, we got to get rid of some of the more potentials. They get rid of the Timber Saw. They get rid of the Gap Closing Sand King and the Viper, uh, possibly favoring a melee core here. Uh, getting rid of someone who can kind of about pretty easily, or maybe just a... Uh, yeah, they might go with the Tiny here. Tiny would typically have problems against a Viper. Uh, so or that's PA. like a red flag for me. Or PA. Mm -hmm. PA as well. That's very much true. Ten seconds remaining. So if they go with uh, some sort of whisk combo, that's also melee, Tiny, and uh, PA Five seem to be the remaining. number one and number two uh, as far as that goes. And we'll see what Stay Free want to do. Now, Stay Free, this team... It's an interesting team. I mean, they're currently at the bottom. I think they've disbanded, but I'm not entirely sure. I mean, they're obviously not the team they once were for at least the first two matches, now sporting a 0-4 and four record. Uh, Trout is in the house, mind everyone. He is now sporting the name Touch My Milk Duds. So uh, after you're done touching his Milk Duds, give him the respect of knowing that that's just, uh, you know, Trout right there. Their manager, Nayrock, also getting in the action, and, of course, Jaw, Fanny, and Crit right on. there. So we are missing the Jiggle. We are missing the Exist. Radiant uh, team and pick. overall, a team that's been pretty much a hodgepodge and group Demons. of players since the beginning. Demon. It's not over there. It's just it's an interesting group. Yeah. And, yeah, they will go with the PA. So PA is going to be the grab to be accompanied with that uh, Wisp. We'll see if they decide to amplify that damage much further. Um... You know, given that they potentially could use either Batrider or Phantom Assassin in the mid lane, 
Uh, they could just instead have Batrider in the off lane, Phantom Assassin farming the safe lane, and they could still grab something like a Magnus for the mid, uh, and put that duel with Io if they want to get the empower for Phantom Assassin, or uh, if they, yeah, I think that's pretty much the one thing that stands Five out to me. I'd like to see a Tide pick for Union Gaming. I think Tide would be really strong. Oh, it's a mid, time. I think. Oh. Is, I think that stay free. you going to go ahead and pick up that Ogre, Radiant so it's probably back. not going to be an option anymore. But if they if they run the PAIO mid, I mean, mm -hmm. it would depend on their last pick, but if they ran PAIO mid, Tide does very well against those heroes. Because you can just anchor smash when the PA blinks onto you. That's true. <clears throat> Ten seconds That's remaining. True. Yeah, Wisp, I imagine, is going to be lingering in that mid lane, being able to get those combos up Five on... Uh, I'm not remaining. sure Side if stack. they'll safe lane it or it mid the PA. Yeah. That information will probably be revealed with this fifth pick, I'd imagine. If it's a primary mid laner, then I would imagine they'd opt to throw <coughs> PA in the side lane. They could just also get a secondary core in addition to that and just have a lot, lot to offer in the late game. I mean, Union Gaming don't have a whole lot as far as late game goes. If this is going to be indeed a support ogre with a support Skyrath, they do have the void with Bloodlust. Yeah, that's true. Not to be underestimated. Bloodlust, wow. Mask of Madness, and Mystic Flare is uh, huge work Radiant that can be done inside that Chronosphere. Pick. Um, but, you know, I'm still curious to see where, where the chips are going to lie here. Stay free will probably... Unfortunately, they don't get to see Union Gaming's last pick, so they have to decide now if they want to put PA, IO, mid, and it looks like that's what their choice is going to be. Yeah, PA and IO will be dual laning in the mid. Uh, you got your... Eo. Is that how you're supposed to say it? I don't know. Merlini like and, right? and Zyori are both like on the EO bandwagon. Everyone else is IO. I, maybe I should just say Wisp. I just say IO. Or you can just say Wisp, I guess. Right? Just Wisp. The ball. He's a freaking ball. He doesn't have a face. Why do I have to know his name? He's not even giving the respect of talking to me. He just gives me beeps and boops. I'll just call him Beep Boop for all I care. I don't, Ten I don't really care. <laughs> Whatever. He's going to look like he a dog. basically is Beep Boop. Yeah, Mr. Beep Five Boop and Phantom remember. Assassin are going to be your dual lane setup, I would imagine, here for Stay Free. you got your Centaur in the off lane. Uh, Bane will be uh, also supporting it on out. And Batrider. Uh, Fuck. Well, Batrider. That's interesting. Is this going to be like a solo safe lane, maybe aggressive uh, fly kind no, of no, setup? No, no, it's going to be, I think, uh, Bane, Centaur, safe lane. Bat off lane. Ah. Yay. Yes. Wismith. They want to get the early blink dagger on Centaur. Battle. The old secondary core kind of a Centaur. It can be done, absolutely. And uh, for Union Gaming, they finish out their draft getting a hold of that puck. And I'm just as curious to see how they're going to decide to lane this one out as they have a nice it's gonna be mid. mix. But it looks like they're going to aggro. Yeah, That's that a really strong lane. Oh yeah, look at it go. They're going to have Void against Batrider. I would say that matchup probably fine for Void. Slightly Batrider favorite, I would say. Indeed it is. All right, well, I guess without further ado, we have uh, hopped ourselves into the second game of today. We got four total, four best of ones here for the Summit 2 by G2A.com, America Division here. Both of these teams, Stay Free and Union Gaming, are looking for their first win, trying to battle their way out from the bottom and hopefully get themselves into a higher echelon as well as maybe a tiebreaker position to try to make a go into the top four oh. for a playoff position. But a long arrow does going. catch here. On Centaur, but it's a little too far, even though it's a nice full duration. There's not enough follow-up to take down the big bad Brad, so they're just going to let him go. But leading off with your introductions, Radiant Side, it is going to be Team Stay Free, or I don't know what team they are anymore, but it's definitely a different mix of what they once started with. But regardless, we got Crit, who's going to be playing your EO slash IO slash Whip, Wisp slash Beep Boop in the mid lane. He's going to be, uh, for now, alongside Narok Dota, sponsored by Hot Dogs on your Bat Rider. We are going to have Ja playing your support Bane. We have Fanny, who's going to be playing your Centaur War Runner. And, of course, that does leave Mr. Touch My Milk Duds, a.k.a. Trouth, now heading up on the point, playing your Phantom Assassin in the mid lane. Yep, and then on the side of Union Gaming, we have Benjos playing the safe lane Faces Void. In the mid lane, I believe that's Sidoral playing mm -hmm. the Puck. Dendrils playing Skyrath Mage, Angel on the Marana, and play this guy's in Daiko. Dake? Dyke? Daiko. Daiko. Okay. Sure. He is a stand in currently for Union right. Gaming. He's playing the Ogre. I was going to say, I didn't recognize that name. Yeah, I 
I did ask him, I wanted to confirm whether this mid lane player, Mr. 11080209, was indeed Sidderall, and indeed it is, or as some people like to say, the Feederall. Though he doesn't feed, he's pretty good. Feederall. <laughs> I don't know, this, the people say that in the underground scene, but I think he's, he's a solid player, he's playing a great puck, he's going to be elusive, he's going to be hard to easily get taken out here from this pesky dual lane. It would take a whole lot of reasonable lockdown to make it work, so he's looking he's instead to battle out with CS. Uh, yeah, top lane, uh, Benjaz is just smacking it home here on the backside of Bane, shoving Jaw out of the lane and allowing him and his Skywrath Mage to just deal with the side camp and all this additional sweet farm. It looks like they went for the Bat Raider in the safe lane, and then they s abandoned the aggressive tri lane and just opted to do dual lanes. You know, given that hopefully uh, Nayrock doesn't get the back end of an arrow and a Fire Blast follow-up, he should be sitting okay here, but it looks like Daco is constantly looking for a chance to sneak in there with a Fire Blast, and hopefully Angel can follow it up with a nice piercing shot, and they can take down that pesky flying rat. I don't think he'll be able to farm in this lane, however. Like, he might not die, but farming is going to be an issue. Oh, they jump right back lane. after the hoof stomp here, and they're making it go on Fanny, and he does indeed fall! Benjaz, pick up your first blood on the very beefy Centaur. Now, they had initially put in their focus onto Ja, who made his retreat, but at the same time, Centaur pushed on ahead to try to stun out uh, the Skywrath Mage, but he ultimately just goes a little too far into the creeps, eats too much damage, and it's an easy cleanup there for your Faceless Void. And then in the bottom lane, it's got Batrider sitting at 1 CS to the Marana's 12. You know, he's just going to have to play so... Careful on this lane so that he doesn't get yeah. stunned into arrowed. This is Iraq, a uh, was eating Chinese food and how fast him to play. So he's probably feeling pretty hungry. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a factor in his play or not, but we have a, a wisp rotation here to the top. As they're making a go on Ja here, uh, he's going to fall here. This is a simple jump in. Wisp is going to try to keep him alive, however, and they're going to put to use quickly those spirit balls. And now Ben Jazz has to retreat. Oh, big damage zapped out there, and look who has redemption. It's going to be Ja. Grabbing it, it they take down the Faceless Void. Wisp have uh, Invis Rune? I don't know. I wasn't clicking on him, and he looks the, way the they exact played same. That, yeah. yeah, the way they played that, it looked like they didn't know Wisp was there. You know, he probably did. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, with that I model imagine now. that was an Invis Rune, because otherwise yeah. I, my mind would just be blown. Making a jump here, a little bit of harassment on Trouf to the puck, but... Uh, I, you know, I wish they do three. something with that invis animation for Wisp. You just do not yeah. know unless you click on Or double damage as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just no name, no no dialogue. Give me something, Val. Beep boop. Beep. Beep boop, indeed. Bottom lane, though, uh, still, it looks like, you know, Mr. Daiko over here, scouting out the outside, hoping for uh, catching out a glimpse of Nayrock, knows he's not in the lane, so he's like, what the hell is this guy doing? He's probably trying to farm up a Blink Dagger, or get some stacks going, which Nayrock is. He's flying about, but instead Daiko's like, oh, it's time. It's four minutes, bounty room for me. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. He takes that with himself back towards the bottom, but Angel has been having the time of her life in this bottom lane, 23 and 8. Free farm CS. Trouf is the next closest contender. His 22 and 10 PA in the mid going against Pucks, 14 and 3. He is definitely making it count for right now, but... Yeah, Stay Free could be falling back onto his shoulders uh, if this mid game gets a bit out of like hand. It looks like going to clear this huge stack set up by the Wisp. All right, very that nice. I believe a quad stack and a double stack, so that's good for him. Look at the levels and the gold quickly come in. This will put him right up to level five once he completes it. And uh, actually stuck up there. He's going to have to also Radiant's wait 15 seconds before he can get back down, attack. unfortunately. And uh, top lane Centaur had fallen previously, but he's got Tranquil Boots and a Salve for now. Uh, still trying to get on forward towards his level 6. Not doing a solo lane like you typically see your Centaurs do, so he's not going to get his Stampede as quick as you normally would like. But Jaw's going to be right there to aid him about just in case. Doesn't want to get Radiant's zoned back too hard from that Skywrath Mage, attack. having Bane to be by his side, uh, who did get that previous kill on Faceless Void. Uh, relatively slow start aside from that, just a one-for-one -one trade. Uh, while the teams continue to just take advantage Radiant's of the farm they got, which is more is likely attack. here in the bottom lane. Nayrock shows up. He's like, guess who's got, his, guess who's got levels now? Oh, but they fire blast him. And uh, he's just going to try to scare him away a little bit with their fire flight. And Puck doing an excellent job in the mid lane. So they're all sitting at 23 CS. 30 of Phantom Assassin. And considering this lane, doing a, a great job. Yeah, the 2v1. Typically never a, a great matchup, but top lane, they're making it go once again on Jaw. Hoof Stomp does stop Faceless Void for now, but uh, the Coil pretty much seals the deal as Benjaz 
Sweeps on through and gets the last hit in and a double kill for him. A nice grab and a good rotation coming out from Sidorall to kind of secure both of those kills for him. Six minute room, Puck and Wisp. Wisp quickly grabs it. And those, now they got a couple of balls. They're going to look to scout Their out the area. Rotate to the tower. bottom lane. He's heading up for this top lane. Yeah. Shenanigans. So Centaur's down Enjoy. here now going toe to toe with Marana. Marana should be able to get away Has from any sort of heavy pressure. Bits. There they are. Got him. Sends back back to the lane. Going with the 2 2 1 kind of a build, not doing any sort of heavy favoritism into the this arrow. Void has three kills at six minutes. That is scary. Yeah, power treads already. Probably going to get close to that Mask of Madness. Dyer's middle tower a fantastic start attack. for him. That is level six. Working on the Blink Dagger currently at 1300 gold with Tranquil Boots at seven minutes. So he's probably on pace for about a nine, ten minute Blink Dagger. <laughs> Uh-oh, they're making it go on Centaur. Coming in from behind is Banny. Puts Angel to sleep, but Fanny also gets fire blasted. There we go. Nice chop, and they're able to take down Marana with the Wisp aid right there. TPing in. Good sleep for yeah. me. They aid their Centaur friend, so unfortunately you gaming get a bit too excited on jumping at the opportunity for Centaur, but a nice rotation comes out from Stay Free. A team of hodgepodge players actually coming together pretty nicely. The communication seems to be out there, and they're getting it done, so... They are looking to fight back, push themselves up two to three. Still though, Faceless Void having the time of his life, farming up in this top lane with three kills already and a full lane to work with. Denied. You know, pretty much Trouth is the one finding a lot here in the mid. Ooh, Skyrath lingering nearby. Not level six yet, and he goes, hey, I want that. Oh, nice crit, and they take him down. Wow, that was quick work. Almost didn't even need the Wisp to get it done. Meanwhile, Stampede gets called out. Arrow not gonna catch, but it is going to be a Void to the mid lane. Pops out the Chronosphere, takes down Wisp, and they also followed up with a nice orb and take down Trout as well. Touch my milk duds. Gets taken out. Kill on the Skyrath. Excellent rotation by the Void. Gets Colonel on two and simple cleanup kills for him. Both teams really putting those TPs to use, aren't they? Man, oh man. Yeah, a lot of rotations in this early game. Pretty action packed. All right, here we go. Wisp is back. Does have his level six. Eat these balls, buddy. On the way out, Nayrock. I wish he had his blink at this point. Quite have his blink. Yeah, that would be a really good time to have it. Dang. And he'll just kind of take himself back to the jungle and finish what he started with as far as investment towards that blink. Uh oh, bottom lane though. Yeah. Centaur easily taken apart there. That silence coming in from Skyrath Mage, and of course the stun follow-up makes it pretty easy to take down the big and beefy Centaur War Runner. And uh, Jaws here. Steps out. Can I rotate Radiant anyone down here? Uh, Jama might just die if they don't. Yeah. No, they, I don't even Looks know if like they have the TPs go. anymore to make it work. Oh, so. they're going to oh. relocate. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Oh, he goes too far past out of the tether, but regardless, is able to quickly take down Skyrath Mage. Ogre might be next, but Trolf is already going on Angel, while Bane unloading here. And here comes Sidoral, has a coil, and he gets put tight to sleep. Ogre is taken out, and they got to run back before uh, Sidoral catches up. He's on the run. He has no blink, however. They use the Stampede even to get away from this one. I think they could have woken Puck up. Oh, oh Coil does oh eventually catch here on Trout. And that haste. Yeah. Putting in the work. Oh, gets oh. to the low ground. The Marana Starfall actually seems to connect just as he blink strikes away towards Nayrock. I thought that had missed. Yeah. I thought he was like just outside the AoE. Uh, top lane, a little harassment there on your Faceless Void, but now he's running into a concussive shot. He gets silenced up and... The day continues to get a little bit harder here for Centaur. He's trying to ring around the Rosie of the Tower. Wisp does show up, but it's too late. He gets taken down, but they get another quick redemption kill on Skyrath. Skyrath's been falling just as many times, it seems, as Centaur in each trade, but Centaur being taken down is definitely a lot better. They were able to get a nice kill on the Centaur, only at the cost of the Skyrath, so... Yeah. ...to find for them. Chronos are now available. Kind of low right now, so oh, there we go. Season. Tower going to be taken down. There's your blink going to work. They take down Sidoral with it. Very nicely done from Nayrock Hot Dog. And now oh, they take down the Ogre Magi as well. Quick two for nil in the mid lane after the uh, top lane engagement. Put Stay Free still right back into the mix. And maybe they consider going for a tower themselves here in the mid where you have Angel hanging out nearby. No help to come in just yet. Quick use of that blink dagger. Really important for them to get the bat involved. Boy just picked up his Mask of Madness. He can yeah. pretty much solo kill 
I would say anyone except PA. Yeah, that blur might prove to be Although, a, a problem. Although, he only has one point in it. Yeah. Going for the max phantom strike. Yeah, we'll see uh, how, uh, how deep his RNG is, though. That'll be the real trick. Even inside a bubble, that evasion will definitely persist. And Benjaz can prove to have a bit of an RNG battle between his bash and her blur at some point. But for now, he heads himself right back to the top lane. Continuation of farm. Could look to build up right into the Maelstrom next. It doesn't seem BKB is going to really do a whole lot for him in this game as there's already a lasso and the Fiend's grip and PA's physical damage. Centaur maybe hoof stomp, but outside of that, might be just more worried that you go damage. We'll have to see. Meanwhile, though, Smoke Gank from the rest of the Union Gaming squad are scouting out to see if there's going to be anyone to move up here on this top lane. And it's a Smoke Gank for Smoke Gank here. Two blaze it up, boys. Oh, this could be a disaster. And John moves forward. Thinks he has an opportunity to go with double ults, but look who comes in. It's going to be the quick coil to stop that Fiend's grip. Jumping on forward as well. No chrono needed yet. Wisp, however, going to be caught out, and he is not going to be able to get away, and he gets blasted and taken down. That leaves Nayrock as the sole survivor as he quickly flies himself out of that hot mess. That was just a high risk play coming out from Stay Free. This they have no vision of any dire heroes, and they still go attack. for the play. Yeah. And it cost them dearly. Radiant really did, and now fortified. they're paying for it. Radiant's top they top top three, and they're going for During two. All of that. I pick up his blink there. Yeah, he's only 30 gold away. Yeah. Gonna get that really soon. That's a big item for them. They'll be able to catch out the puck. I mean, any of these heroes are very susceptible to the centaur stun. Yeah, because there's a lot of mobility here on the gaming. As puck goes in, now gets help from Wisp. He's already committed to the orb forward, but there's going to be Ogre stepping in with a fire blast. And they're not going to persist. Ooh, arrow. Not going to catch, but all the meanwhile, it's uh, Benjaz here. He gets a quick kill on John, the top lane. It looks like uh, he, didn't even use, he didn't even need to use the chrono. They had the silence from Skyra. Ah, uh, yes. That pesky Skywrath gets the job done, uses the Mystic Flare to do it, and it's more than enough to take down Bane. There we go, blink and grab, but he runs right into a two times multi, but they follow it up easily with that blink that was recently picked up from Centaur, and they double edge down the Birdman. Skywrath Mage does hit the deck, and now they freaking kind of just push on down this mid lane, no problem. Tower's already at half life. Daiko's nearby. You can get off another fire blaze like night, but he's opting for the battle fury build. Have it? No, he only has the broadsword and the health, so he's probably looking at about a 16-minute battle fury. Pretty decent timing. Yeah. With all those other items because he went for an. Since he's not uh, benefiting shield. from any sort of empower this game, the uh, farm acceleration that could come out from a battle fury with its damage and its cleave. Certainly doesn't help I definitely in definitely like either. it with Wisp as well. I think yep. you can get away with not rushing BKB when you have a Wisp on your team. And it accelerates your farming speed, which is definitely important when you have a Wisp. <laughs> and they might be counting on crits uh, Wisp here pretty often on aiding them if they get caught on the bad end of a Chrono or a hefty engagement. So we'll see if crit's going to be there as a nearby babysitter, but also could add a lot of aggression to Trouth with that overpower. So just expect him to be sewn at the hip here for the majority of this game as Trough continues to farm it up. Being probably the most significant late gamer between both of the teams, you know, he can't pull it out down the road uh, as long as maybe Faceless Void doesn't get a whole lot more kills coming his way. But he's already 7-1 and one than Jazz is on this Faceless Void. And Marana, who's also opted for more of a core position, still only has her foundation, the drums, the phase boots, Aquila, not even getting, like, a reliable Yasha just yet. So once the damage does build up on her, she can become, you know, kind of a semi semi carry. And now that we've transitioned out of the lane phase and into this little farming phase, if we take a look at the gold, it's at four thousand in favor of UG. With the one thousand experience, they've not very significant. So UG doing a pretty good job in the early game. I think it's very hard to say Radiant's who has better late like, game this game, since they both have their advantages and disadvantages. I think, yep. you know, you have the Ogre, which probably is the best scaling support. He's always the, the wild right card. Now. Yeah, and then you have the con the single target control with the Bane and Lasso from the Bat Rider, and then you have the AOE teamfight control. Arrow! Wow! Trough almost walks into it. That would have been devastating. 
but Radiance not gonna get caught out at a slow siege. Bottom oh, tower ooh, this is attack. for uh, Narox slash Centaur plus Stampede. Very get odd that there. we see Wisp solo bottom without the PA. If they had the PA here bottom with Wisp, oh, it could be split. Narox <laughs> jumps in, can't get a hold of Marana, it runs right into a fire blast and gets blown up oh. from Mystic Flare. Oh no, this is going terrible right now for Stay Free as they just follow it up with another kill, catching the Chrono onto Bane, makes a two-man takedown. Moonlight Shadow also going to be used, so now Stay Free's engagement unfortunately collapses right before their very eyes as Nayrock could not quite get a hold of Angel. That quick leap allows her to get away and bummer. They lose their tier two. Should start looking at Roshan right now. They can get Rosh perhaps. Yep. Maybe they don't feel that they can do it fast enough or safe enough without the Chrono being online. But yeah, it was really surprising to me that Io was solo bottom instead of being with the PA. Yeah, PA can always find the farm on the side with the Wisp and then only come into the fray when, when needed with that relocate. So that's potential farm elsewhere that's not being picked up here by Trouth, unfortunately. Yeah, they're going to go for a The arrow's going to miss. Missed arrow? On Russian. Oh, bummer. That's Sometimes those uh, the targets are just sitting there, you know, not moving. You can just, you can just blame ones. the, the Roche change. Oh, okay. Not used to the new pit. Yeah, okay. I guess if you're reaching. I mean, I'm not a great Marana, but I, I can land that arrow at least. They'll still be able to take down this Roche pretty easy here with only the three committed. No contention whatsoever as most of Stay Free have... Congregating themselves up to the top lane, looking to finish out this tier one tower with relative ease, but maybe it's not going to be so easy as we're seeing pings called out right now from Benjaz, who has that Aegis. They might look to defend. This tower's not even a half life yet, so it's going to take a whole lot. Stay free have moved in now, Trouth and Wiss, so they have all five up here. We'll see. Against my advisement, apparently, they're going to go ahead and defend Dyer's this tower. tower All right, well, we'll see. Arrow, not going to quite catch on Nayrock, but they do have the intel that he's there. While the they rest of them that sweeping in from behind. This, this might be a quick two-man coil if they want it. Sidoral instead jumps up and above. Chrono is going to oh, no, catch on three, but it's team. on his own team. Oh, no. Faceless Void quickly goes down. Skyrath Mage also hits the deck, the Aegis. Going to be used when they're looking to get something out of it. They do take down Wisp and Bane in the end. Now, oh, Fanny can't quite get off the hoof stop in time. He falls. They quickly blow up. And now Trout under the gun makes it four, considering the very, very poor start from Union Gaming and be able to still pull off that. Kind of goes to show that Stay Free are still struggling in this one. And Bat Raider still has the lasso available. It Odd that he didn't choose to use it that fight. I guess he just didn't find the right target at the right Maybe time to make a jump in. Maybe he was pushed or back from that Radiant's crazy Chrono. Is under attack. Oh, they're jumping through. They see Nayrock. They want him. Silence is there. Orb. And, well, they quickly take them down. The Warning Rift. The last hit right there. Actually, Skyrath Mage gets Radiant's the one lingering attack, uh, attack or something. Attack. Takes him down. But that makes it five at the end of it. That recap doesn't show it whatsoever, but Union Gaming pushed well in the head. 19 to 10 now. Their gold lead now presses past the 10k mark. And this is once again looking Huge like a pretty lopsided match. Radiance yeah. bottom tower is under attack. And what do Stay Free do now? I think they need to start split pushing with the Wisp and Io combination. Instead of trying to five men. I don't think that's where the strength of their draft lies. They need to find pickoffs with either the Bane Fiend script or the Lasso coming out from Batrider. Oh man. Well their Centaur might be picked off here if he's not quick on the uh, blink. No, no, they'll just slowly move in. Keep the lane pushed. There's Centaur just a lack of out. farm right now on the PA. He should have a lot more if he was split pushing with Wisp. Radiance bottom Trying to get that Claymore. Finish out that Battle Fury, but that still puts him pretty behind. Only at 1k life, he can get burst real easily. Especially if they catch a Chrono on him and Wisp is not going to be there to save him. Radiance bottom it can be tower rough. Is under attack. They're just going to open up on this Tier 2, no problem. Looks like there's not going to be much of a defense here from Stay Free. They'll just continue to farm out the other lanes. Banking on hopefully a strong performance from Trout on their PA later on. And hopefully a better initiation coming out from their Bat and their Centaur. 
but they continue to lose out as another objective is going to be taken right there from Union Gaming, and their farm just continues to get bigger and bigger. And Stay Free have finally decided it's time to split push with the Wisp Dyer's and... Top tower is okay, under attack. maybe not. Is it appears there's a bit of miscommunication between Wisp and PA. Yeah, what? Looks like Wisp wanted to push the top tower, and then PA just TP'd home. Dyer's Fine, I'll finish it. He gets fallen. the tower taken down. As I'm not sure why PA isn't just split pushing with Wisp. He's always TPing back before yeah. fights start. Uh, well, poor Nayrock might be caught here. Yeah, they uh, lock him down with this coil. Mystic Flare, not going to catch, but the arrow will, and it's Morano against the last hit. Angel catches again and takes down Batrider. Nayrock just wants his Chinese food. And hot dogs, apparently. Doesn't really want to... It's a pretty rough game at this point. Yuji yeah. has a lot of tools to keep you locked down. They have the Coil, the Skywrath Slow, the Skywrath Silence, the Ogre Stun, the Arrow. There's so much follow-up magic damage coming through that without BKBs, it's really easy to get picked up. Your Yule's now going to be complete on Sidoral, so blinking Yule's as if it wasn't hard enough to take down the puck. That defensive Yule's capability is going to be a, a whole lot better for them, or just being able to catch anyone out, or maybe a blink in from Nayrock trying to get a lasso, and then they just quickly throw him up in the air. This, thing's in, this makes things a lot more difficult for a stay freeze initiation, which has been pretty much non-existent for the majority of this game. They're just trying to find the footing to get something going for themselves. My god! Touch finally milk getting duds. some finally getting some good farm on the PA. You know, he's yep. slowly got up to the highest CS in the game at 135. Dyer's bottom tower and he's just gonna need to continue farming because at this point it's PA versus the world. Yeah. He's gonna have to get five or six slots and then start critting people. Dyer's middle tower it's like a bad movie attack. that goes straight to DVD. PA versus the world. As tries to get it done. Are you, are you calling this game bad? No, not the, no, I'm just saying it, it's a bad <laughs> movie kidding. title. <laughs> I was but, just giving you a hard time. Whatever. That's... We'll see. Uh, as it might be R-rated. Kids, oh, hide your eyes miss... here. This might get ugly real quick. Uh, Mystic Flare, Hoof's not not going to be quite where they wanted. And uh, with oh, dust popped on the Moonlight the Shadow, off. they don't, they don't get the it. Script. Oh, they, they didn't get the one dust. The script off. Yeah. He went into the animation and then he got fogged at the very end. That hurts. Close there, but Jock couldn't quite get a grip. No, had it been daytime, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyways. I heard that laugh was a little too much. Yeah, and I needed to give myself a sympathy laugh because I know I'm just going <laughs> to get a bunch of fail fishes from that one. But, anyways, we'll see. Radiant <laughs> Union Gaming. Is under attack. Still uncontested in this one. Uh, Stay Free are still just grasping at straws for a big turnaround fight that would allow them to open up that rubber band factor here Oops, in the... Uh, I disconnected on accident. I, you're, you're the one that doesn't like the game, apparently. I will be back shortly. Pressing in his five, though, is going to be Union, Union Gaming as they begin to unload attack. the damage. You see the Mjolnir active. Going to be here on the Ogre. The big fat boy can look to get into a tussle. He also... Man, he looks crazy right now. He's like... Having a straight-up seizure with that Mjolnir and Bloodlust on top of each other. Radiant's Anyways, they do manage to finish off Tier 2 fallen. Tower. No contention there whatsoever, but... Prouthus shift on in, and ultimately it's just them having to stall. Stall, 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 and hope that their PA can get to a point where he can get the big, big right-click and try to burst down Union Gaming's potential to make a... You know, an opening to end this game. But it just looks good for Union Gaming. I mean, it almost looks like Deja Vu from last game. They just look pretty strong. They're playing it safe, but they get a hold of Centaur with a nice Arrow Mystic Flare, and any kind of combo like timer. that will take anyone down. My Rush timer has disappeared. Send help. Well, it's uh, about 30 seconds away from the new time. Okay. So we'll see. Uh, an Arrow. So apparently, not when catch. you reconnect, it doesn't load the Rush timer. Yeah, it's, it's a weird bug. Bound bugs. They're moving They're on in, fixed. though. They're uh, beginning to get some nice hits in. They have Ben Jazz constantly there. Uh, he's actually putting himself well into the fight. I guess they just feel like there's really well, nothing they can do. Batrider jumps in, but he Blast could get Yules up. He gets Fire Blast instead. Now a jump in Coil catches, and they Aarox in big him. trouble. Trout, big damage right here. Centaur falls. Quick buyback. And, uh, well, they can't really get a hold. 
of the, even the Skywrath Mage. They do manage to take down the Faceless Void. Full Fiend's Grip catching here on Angel. And uh, Deco can't get him a stun off quite yet. Gets the multi, however. They take down the Marana in exchange for that Bane. And Trout gets a double kill for himself. And the Centaur who had bought back got a double kill as well. So coming out on top with a pretty nice defense on the back of those buybacks is going to be stay free, making it a four if you count the buyback for four. Good fight from stay free. I think that when this Void gets his Dyer's BKB though, that's not going to be possible anymore. I mean, they did overextend a bit. They got a little greedy for the tier Dyer's 3 tower. tower and the fight honestly wasn't that bad considering the position. They got The Void got lassoed to, into the tier 4 and they still were attack. able to trade 4 for 3. And no Chrono was used, so... This is a nice... Looks... This is a pretty girthy stack we got here though that he's farming up, so this is, this and is working BKB pretty good. Up. He's got the Vlads underhand. Love to be able to build again a little more farm, but little by little, every little bit. You see they grab that little to get it right back up. That's that could be the start of the climb. For stay free to come back into this one. It's it's never over till it's over. And we see Narok now. <laughs> Narok's got his over club, he's looking to build forward towards the BKB. He doesn't want to be dealing with any of that pesky Yules or lockdown or heaven forbid, a quick auto silence from a Skyrath Mage and anything he can bring. Trying to get a little bit extra durability for him. Bottom lane, Faceless Void now completes his own BKB. Shiny new 10 seconds to put to work. And that would definitely have helped. Last fight, he was quickly bursted down. Not going to aid him from a Lasso or a Fiend's Grip, but still going to grab it. Even though he did get it after his Mjolnir. I feel like they can just use Potom to hit the tower. I mean, to hit the Rex. And then... The second they go on bottom, the Dyer's they can use both the puck attack. and the chrono yeah. to create Radiant's a buffer and then just start the team fight. Attack. In fact, I think at the next stages. So, how much time is on the new timer? Well, about three seconds. All right, nice. Three. So I think I think two, they should give the Aegis one, to bottom. One and a half, Roche. One and three quarters. One and three quarters. Let's fight. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. I went the wrong direction. Yeah, I did too. Should have been half, a quarter, <laughs> an eighth. Oh well. Math, math is hard. Anyways, they're gonna move on through. Dyer's get all this Roche, no contention whatsoever. Instead, stay free one trade objectives. They're going for the tier two here in the top lane, where most of the team is also moving on over. And I think going they're gonna right give it to top. Void, but I feel like they should give it to Bottom. They'll give it to Void. They'll give it to Void. I like it on bottom because, well, I guess they can do the same thing with Void, so. top tower This time he can attack. just sit in the front like he yeah, was previously, just... but not pay the consequences of... And they're just going to go mid. Uh, we'll see if Stay Free want to double back fallen. here. I mean, of course, with the benefit of Relocate, they can at least send back Trowth, but for everyone else, they're kind of second-guessing the commitment they want to make here. It looks like they will. At least Trowth will TP all the way back. He probably could have stayed top a little bit longer and used a Relocate, maybe, but... For now, I guess he'll just make the early TP back. The rest of his team's still staying in the top lane for now, but here comes Union Dyer's Gaming down the mid lane, slowly attack. taking the high ground. Radiant's Sentry's down in case the Moonlight Shadow attack. is going to be there, but Benjaz, of course, with that Aegis, happy to tank the point. Start to quickly taking apart the creeps. Blink and Lasso is going to be committed for this kill, but this is only for that first life, but he pops the Chrono anyways. That allows the Mystic Flare to come on in. Big damage there on Centaur. Centaur does fall. And here comes Fo Faceless Void back from the dead. He can pop his BKB now and put it to use. Angel goes to the low ground to get away from this one. They do lose their Skywrath Mage. But Trouth now could fall here. He's eating a lot of damage and getting it back. Man, that, le that Leech going into overtime gets a double kill. Taking down Ogre only, though, two supports. Moonlight Shadow hides everyone else under that nighttime darkness. And they might pull back here. They will. Sidoral joins them and they step on out. They don't take any racks. Back to back convincing team fights off yeah. the back of the two single target disables. Oh, here we go. They're coming in from behind, and well, before I can even get the camera over, Bane is quickly taken down and looking to flank from behind is right, they might lose Union Gaming. Yeah, yeah, they're going to go for Trout here, and Trout does not benefit. I was just going to say from Lich, but Lich he is might here. Just be able to fight now. Or, or Wisp. Wisp has relocate if necessary, and they put their focus on this Wisp now. He's going to try to relocate? No? No, he's not. He's going to hold oh my strong. God, they can't take him down. They're doing it! Wisp and oh, PA! OP as hell! Moving on through! Mystic Get the Flare. Birdman! The Mystic Flare goes behind, doesn't catch the mark, and... Ogre's back for round two! 
But they're not done yet, boys. Stamping on through, they're gonna take down Ogre. Now he dies back to back, and Trout. The team is on my back, and I'm looking to take it home. Gets a yes, triple 7, kill. Seven thousand golds. So freaking rich. That's almost a uh, abyssal. Somebody touched it? this man's milk duds. They've already been touched. They're touched. Already they're glistening. Mott is somewhere. He's real happy. And they're gonna quickly take down this tier two. My goodness. The Wisp PA wow. getting it done in that Ghost Scepter now. They really need an MKB Dyer's on this list. Tower is under attack. I don't think You know, they were the the PA was getting out healed by the damage that was coming out, so then Void turns his attention to Wisp, then Wisp Dyer's uses the Ghost Scepter, and they just got attack. kited around. Yeah. Great play coming up from Crit on the Wisp. Every hit that Trouf got to put out where he was not being contested and the focus was trying to be on Wisp even while Ghost Scepter, he just got all of his life back with those big crits and trying to fight bottom. He was right back into it. And they're looking to try to make a jump here on Centaur. He got his pipe out, but let's see if they're gonna be lucky. Yeah, Arrow's gonna be their Mystic Flare. They take him down. You know, Centaur's been caught out many a time by that. But it looks like Union Gaming are just trying to Oh the coil not gonna catch the quick reaction from Nero gets it done. And poor Sidorol. Not gonna get anyone there. He is gonna go for the f completed Mantis style. Not gonna opt for an Abyssal Blade or. Which I think are both good choices. That's interesting. I don't see Manta every day there on your PA. But that's more right click, sure more speed. Purpose of the Sometimes you just gotta go fast. Skin. I guess you can get rid of the Puck Silence and the Skyrath Silence, so that's two fortified. good things. Instead of having to use the BKB every time. Oh, they use the image. Oh, oh my! Wow. Oh! Someone That's calls CSI. Damage. This puck is down with no buyback. Wait. Oh, he does have buyback, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he might just got there, but man, that that was that hurt my chest. Oh, he jumps back. Doesn't get the same luck there with Angel, unfortunately. Wisp, where are you? Relocate. He's gone. Unfortunately, he will fall. Nayrock moves in with his BKB, trying to get a hold there of Benjaz. And now they lose Bane. And now this is not going the way Safe Free had wanted. <laughs> and they quickly get taken down. Crit wasn't there in time. Relocates out, relocates back. Tethers forward towards the catapult. Help me, please. Trying to get away from this one, but will ultimately be taken down. And Ogre It's going to be right there to kind of fart in his face. Back into that one. And they go right back into the fountain. PA just didn't use the BKB, you know, putting a little bit too much trust in the Wisp. Yeah. And honestly, he died way too fast for the Wisp. Well, you, if anyways. you BKB, you won't get that tether save, I imagine, unfortunately. So, I guess, yeah. yeah, he was banking on the, uh, the relocate. He just but it died too there. fast. But I think they could have team fought with the BKB. Yeah. There was no chrono yet. It was still down for, I believe, 10 seconds at the time of that fight. Man, a oh man. Yeah, maybe we're hoping that. He was going to be taken out, come back, pop his BKB. At that point, Nayrock would be able to have someone locked down with the lasso, and everything would just kind of... Huck not even forced to use buyback that fight. Yeah. Back now. They they just... Ralph really is back right now, though. Didn't need to use his own personal buyback, which would have been available. Wisp is also going to be here. But he's only they got five more glyph, seconds. So they have a glyph as well, so they're not going to get this Rax without a fight. That's for sure. Jump in now. Pops his BKB. That Mjolnir not going to do a whole lot of damage as he quickly takes down Ogre. But looking to fire back his Benjaz. Pops out. The Chrono oh, gets no one with it. He blinked right out. And now he's forced to go right for the Rax instead with the duration of his BKB. But Nayrock follows it up. Grabs a lasso on the Faceless Void. They're looking to burst him down. And they will. Oh, man. Tries to leap out. Gets taken out right at the end. And Trouf. Leading the charge, going right for Skyrath Mage. The relocate takes him up and above, but he goes the other way. Dagger's going to be right there. Oh, right into a face-first arrow, but Skyrath Mage is just a wounded bird who ultimately gets burnt to a crisp and taken down. Back and forth we go, FRL. What a crazy to the thing. other side, as That's now stay free, <laughs> charge. That Chrono has been, I would say, completely misused in teamfights. He only got, he didn't get the target he wanted, which is obviously the Phantom Assassin. He got the Bat Rider, but it was in a place where no one could attack him. He was like on the cliff. Ooh, Jaws, like I got a Fiend's Grip and I want to use it. Oh, that dagger came from a different game. That was so far away. Hit a Angel, 
Jumps in. Oh, the crit right there at the end. 1,100 damage. Angel's like, holy shit, I gotta get the hell out of here. Now he jumps over. He's making it go. Daiko does soak up a bit of it. Oh, Faceless Void. That Fiend's grip, though, from Ja locks him in his place, and they quickly clean him out, and he is out. No buyback whatsoever. Angel almost gets taken out again, has to leap away. They put their focus on Puck with the lasso. Nicely done, and stay free. Might get their first victory of the Summit to America as they clean out this set of racks. What a nice little comeback play from them. Void does have buyback chrono. Maybe if they connect on this arrow, not quite gonna connect. Does not have it, actually. Six minutes. He's out. Out oh, for good. Oh, I'm a liar. You are a liar. I clicked, the, I like hovered over his- Uh-oh. Jog gets blown up though. Fire Blast Mystic Flare and then with the multicast enough to lock him in his place for the full duration almost. And Daiko's forced to retreat. Wow, even the little crit right there on the dagger on the back end side. That secures the first set of racks of the game for Stay Free. And I imagine they pull on back here. I don't think they're going to... I wanna... wouldn't say this game's over by any means. I still think UG have plenty of chances. They might want to yeah. slow the tempo down, get an MKB on the Faceless Void so that they can deal with this Phantom Assassin. They probably need a BKB on the Mirana and the Hex on the Puck, and I think that they can begin to take fights again. Yeah. And stay free. Can't afford to get too overzealous with this new momentum and look at that net worth hello we're back to even boys what was once what 1400 some odd gold lead 14k rather gold lead now back to zero and he experience could on the PA. i think he'll go for the basher but he could yolo or rapier um yeah he has a relic that's a relic yep that is that's a relic i'm so. pretty sure it's gonna be an abyssal but why not just wait for the Roche, get that sweet, be. sweet Aegis rapier, and just hit him where it hurts. But I think that's a sh one way to throw the game is to give Hera a rapier. I don't think you need that much damage to win on PA. Because you, you pretty much one-shot people, even with Abyssal, so... Yeah, this is, this is good. Trough is in a very nice spot at this point. They were... Hoping for their dark horse to pull on out, and he is there. Oh my goodness, that's a that's a. Oh, look at that blueberry. Oh, and a fight's gonna break oh, out. Boy. This could go bad if he gets caught out, and he might here. He's Yules up, and he's put right in the middle of the chrono as they've been to go in Nayrock, but he is about to have a serious party right here, and he moves on in. He does BKB, so the DD is not gonna be used anymore. But regardless, he's looking to clean house. Dominating streak for him. But a double kill for Skyrath Major. Buyback's going to be forced to come out from Nayrock. Wisp is right there, but the tether does break. And they're looking to try to end Trout's reign, but he gets another big crit and a triple kill for him. Oh my goodness. Stay free. Still looking very damn good as Citadel has to go to the high ground to get away from this. And they're just going to push down bottom lane. Grab this tier two. Yeah, they used the Yules on the PA, right, as Ben just thrown out. Oh, Trop is like, screw the, the tower. Two seconds. <laughs> they take the tier 2, Citadel makes his way through the secret shop area. It looked like Nayrock tried to catch him with a flame break, but he's not going to get it, and Citadel... This Wisp is just doing work in these teamfights. They're not focusing Wisp, so he's just getting all the healing, all the overcharge. Yep. They and actually now, need to kill this wisp. They need to find him and kill him in this thing first. They have still, still have 10 seconds from Ron's back. Has this 1, is Rex. 1600 life. Has yeah, wisp is, just, wisp is pretty big now. And they might get Megas. I think they did it. Fallen. That was a big team fight for him. And now he's just putting his attention on this tier 3. I mean, if they want to play it safe, they can pull off now and go for Roche. But he wants to fight. BKB popped. Blink strike forward. Puck quickly pulls away. Now they see Angel, who has to leap out. They're trying to kite as best as possible. Moonlight Shadow even going to be pulled out here while Pipe was popped. Meanwhile, on the backhand side, you can see the Chrono does take out Ja. Now putting the attention on Batrider, who goes to the low ground. They have to really run for that one. But on the other side, Coil's going to be dropped. Still can't get a hold of Puck or anyone is Trout. Trout now might end up going down. Multi to his face. Benja has a secondary multi coming out from Ogre. Takes Trout down, who obviously does have the buyback. Crit not going to be there to quite save him. And Crit just hands himself over. So they do want to stay. They do want to rumble. They know the consequences are they could lose it, and they do. 
Could have just taken the bottom racks, pulled back, got Roche if they wanted to play it extra safe and special, but they do secure the tier 3 in the mid lane. That leaves one set of racks left that are exposed now as Nayrock yeah. were the lone survivors. I think they were fine until the PA just decided to pop BKB and fight. Yeah, you could tell at that moment he's like, you know, let's just do it. They're, they're just committed at that point. They move in. They use the bulk to go in. Maybe if and there was a buyback on Wisp, they could make some sort of counterplay here, but there's not, so... Just Arrow connects this time. By the... They might be able to just steal it with the Bat Rider. Bat Rider's one of the best at this. And Nayrock, he's got hot dogs. Centaur zoning the rest of them back, keeping attention elsewhere. I'll try to zoom Zan out. I want to see this. I want to see this red back end row show. They bully Centaur away. Come on. Nayrock hop in flame break. Gets a hold of it and takes it. the Aegis. That's just what Bat Riders do. Even if you take him down, you're going to lose that extra life, which he's going to put to use right here. Two seconds, one second blink. They know he's going to go to the right hand side. They ping it out. At least they don't. But he's still there. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, I still have your Aegis, by the way. I used it. And uh, he will end up falling, but a oh, well worth sacrifice right there. Though it takes it just Batrider. Makes closing out the game a bit easier. They don't have to deal with a void with two lives anymore. Yeah. Just a cheese. Fantastic and I steal. I think he'll probably just die in a Fiend's grip or a lasso if the PA can get on top of him. I mean, really, like, with a Batrider there and available, you gotta be scouting out the area a little bit better. They don't have anything that can kind of emit a lot of vision, I suppose, unless Puck's nearby to throw out the ore, but. I guess they don't want to bother risking popping a BKB or something. The flame break just pushes everyone away, and it's just like, hello, delicious friend. And it just moves on in and grabs the Aegis like it's nothing. It's probably... I mean, a lot of teams will just BKB against yeah. Bat Raider because... I mean, even Chrono might I mean, have been an option. He probably should have. His BKB was at five seconds anyways. Oh! The Abyssal! There it is! Angel's it's dead. Not even, it's not even that bad to just chrono. Like blind chrono the Roche. Yeah, it's, like right it's also to just die. a minute, yeah. So I think it's at this point in the game when Although you're it's 90 seconds now. When you're down seconds. two sets of racks and you might really, really need that Aegis. I think it's worth it to either pop either the BKB or the Chrono to really secure the grab and, and this PA is just doing so much. Damage. I mean, we just Finish saw him missile. easily take apart Marana mid lane. And now, without a buyback, I mean, they're going to be duking it out. One man down. On their last set of already exposed racks. It looks like Seyfried's not forcing the issue too much. Not wanting to throw this large lead. Maybe they're waiting for the Abyssal on PA, which is five seconds away. I think they can just go. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Yeah, very unlike Stay Free to play it so safe. I think they're ready to take this Taking one a page out. Taking complexities book. We'll throw those advantages. A slow siege though, for now. Just pushing in both sides, both lanes, making sure the creeps get well into the base to at least threaten. I feel a good chrono can still give Union Gaming enough to win a team fight. I guess stay free. Have to be careful still. Maybe they're just waiting for one person to overstep slightly. And we'll see what Union Gaming focus for. I mean, Wisp has got to be one of the primary targets here if you can get a hold of him, especially in a Chrono. That would be huge if he's well, left on the like outside. They're going to go on the offensive with the Moonlight Shadow. And this might be their all or nothing. Well, they don't have vision. Though. They get Trout. They CC him about. And the Chrono locks them two in place, but the quick eject button comes out from Crit. Saves Trout. Brings him right back out. And, uh, whoops, being hauled down here and below, he continues to fight it on about. They do manage to take down Venge as it pulls out the buyback. Wisp, able to quickly jump up the high ground back where he came from with the relocate. Trout multicast there, he's trying to duke it out with the leech, the but wisp. he gets it done. Turns back, take down Skyraz Mage. Venge has, however, back, comes right back in, and they clear out, stay free. The wisp. It's so hard for them to fight this when they ignore the Wisp. They need to kill the Wisp. The Wisp was sitting there with 500 HP. They got the Defusal Blade to counter the Ghost Scepter. They need to focus this Wisp. Just healing for far too much. You can make the argument that Union Gaming came out on top of that skirmish, but it did cost Faceless Void his buyback to come into it. And Trout with his own buyback, buyback ready to go. 
Might second guess them pushing on in because pressure is still in the base. Angel is on defensive duty right here, preventing these creeps from getting too far in. These tier 4 towers are both really, really low as it is. So even when they open up with a big team fight like that, they're not going to get any sort of big follow-up. And Trolf is not going to have to spend his buyback. No one will. The Lincoln Sphere coming out for Marana, it looks like. Not sure about this item. I think he needs more damage. Or an MKB for the... I, mean, I guess the Lincolns would help in case she's been the target and it's, of... Uh, it's for the lasso, but in the Fiend's Yeah, group, but lasso, and you can put it on someone else. doesn't have to be necessary. Just a Marana. simple dagger removes the Lincolns, however. That's true. Not man, sure. Oh man. And they also have four steps to proc it, so there's a couple ways they can proc the Lincolns. Invisibility. Looks like they're Maybe trading off gems on the or something in the base here. If they, if they put it on void though, since he has a BKB, there's nothing that can trigger it. Yeah. And he has so that too. might be what they want to do here. Actually, he said cheese that whole fight. Didn't use it the whole time. I guess he couldn't get it off for his first. He was lassoed and then yeah. he was bursted by the PA. So. Yeah. And a finished satanic. Okay. So huge damage and big sustain. The prize is mine. BKB gaming happening here from both sides, but you know, Centaur here. Eight seconds left on his. Tralf down to his low, low five seconds. Be a little bit more finicky on how you want to pop off that magic resistance right there without getting locked down too easily. But crits I having a. The... It's actually an even game as far as gold is concerned. Oh, well, they're, gonna make it go. they're going for Trout again. They get relocated. Relocate. They get him out. That void. Chrono not going to be to anything unless, well, Fanny walks into it. Now, uh, being able to soak up big damage, they turn their attention back the towards. Off. Yeah, Void's He's down dead. and out. Angel now. Desperate to leap away from this one, but they managed to take down the Void, and he's out for over 100 seconds. They get a hold of Ogre. He'll fall next. Three down all day. No one on the side of stay free here, and uh, it's all on Angel right now to try to defend the last set of racks. I think this is it. Stay free, just kind of take their parade down the mid lane, and they'll be able to take it home. Even with an Ogre buyback, it's not enough. He should have and they should have really anticipated the relocate. I mean, Crit has been on point all game with these relocates. And he chose to deploy the Chrono and... That's it. It didn't hit anything. The white flag has been thrown up here from Union Gaming as... What was a very strong start from him. Ended up being all Trouf all day. MVP. Milk Duds were touched this day. As well, his I would GA say the MVP crit. is Crit. Yeah, Crit as well, of course. And, and they, Crit had a standout performance on the Wisp this game. Crit was right there by Trouf's side and Union Gaming without maybe the proper focus in some of these fights allowed Trouf I mean, to don't really want to open say up. That someone threw, but the Chronos coming out from Benjus are pretty suboptimal that game. Well, I guess that's the softest way you could have <laughs> flamed them right there. So that's impressive from you. They were so. not good. Those finicky ultimates, man. And they cost them. That one I mean, big I fight in mid lane, man. That yeah, was yeah, the yeah. huge was turning point good. for Stay Free when Trout just yeah, when came they out only on top. got, I think they only got the Bat Rider in the Chrono in that fight, but he was like, he was Fireflayed on the cliff, so no one yeah. could hit him. Really, they look good, and it looks like Stay Free are going to secure their first win of the Summit too. They're currently at the bottom zero and four, but moving on up, they're going to go ahead and be one and four now. Union Gaming, unfortunately, that means they bumped down to 0 and 3. Still reaching to try to grab a hold of their first win personally. Uh, we got two more games for you today. Uh, F4L, I believe you are, are going to be um, departing with us, if I am yep. correct. And we are going to be bringing in Mr. Mott Dota. Manly Mott is going to be match. joining us. Your only, your only rival. But only our next rival? I don't know. Oh, for for my it? affection. Oh, I see. I'm going to... Uh, yeah, the picture thing. I'm yes. guessing. Yes, yes, yes. Our next match up for uh, the Summit 2 America is going to be Navi US versus Not Today. Um, oh, that should be a good one. Oh, it will be. And I, I anticipate you'll be in the bleachers watching and enjoying yeah. like everyone else. <laughs> I'll be relaxing before my own match. Good, yes. And then, of course, our final match will feature uh, Turn Your Swag on where we can personally uh, flame 
our yeah, co-host friend right here, F4L, and making sure he doesn't flub any of his own chronos or big ultimates, and, and otherwise we'll be able to laugh oh, at thank him. Thank God I never have to play that hero. <laughs> Regardless, it's been a pleasure as always, my friend. If you like what you heard from F4L, catch him over on his Twitter, at F4L Dota. For myself, catch me over on my Twitter, at Coddle Guy. We'll be back in just a moment after a small break with our next matchup. Please be sure to hang around.